Well, hello, this is Mike from Music City, and welcome to the latest installment of Ranking Records. If you've been following this channel, you know that sometimes we will rank uh, an artist catalog, and sometimes we go back and look at years or other categories. Today, we're going to look at a year. Uh, we're going to look back at the year 1983, and I'm going to tell you what my favorite albums, uh, looking back, were uh, from that year. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. We've done, we've done, I think, from 74 to 82, so we're going to do 83 today. And, man, I'll tell you, I struggled quite a bit with it. I've been sitting on this for a while and reshuffling them and doing research, trying to find out if I'm missing something, but... I gotta be honest with you, there were some good records, um, but not just a stellar year in, in, in terms of musical output. And, and one of the things that I've noticed that sort of supports that opinion, you know, I'll look at a lot of other people's lists and also a very thorough list that shows every release. And boy, there's a lot of diversity uh, in the different top tens that I've seen all across the board. So not a lot of consistency, and I think that's just kind of reflective that it was kind of a mixed year in music. But there, there's some really good stuff, some stuff I like. And I think what I found, too, is on some of them, they had some really good songs, but but just weren't, you know, the kind of the solid albums that, uh, you know, I've been used to seeing, you know, prior to this. But anyway, some good stuff. Let's, let's take a look. Now, uh, I wound up having to expand it a little bit because I kind of got... Uh, you know, maybe a little stuck on some of the picks, but I'm going to look at 13 records today. And, and at the bottom, the first one I'm going to pick is the uh, Information album by Dave Edmonds. I mean, I love Dave Edmonds, uh, and I can't say this is one of his greatest records, but there's some really fine stuff on here. Uh, the title track, Information, is, is a really, really solid song. And the other one is the, probably maybe the one you're familiar with that was the single, uh, was Slipping Away. Now, here's the catch, though. I know a lot of people may hate that song because it was produced by Jeff Lynn of ELO. And, you know, you can spot a Jeff Lynn production, you know, 100 miles away, and some people just get tired of it. I, I happen to like it, and I think uh, did a great job with slipping away. So, number 13, you know, uh, I listened to the record again. I enjoyed it. Not one of Dave's best, but I think it was, uh, it, it was sort of a high point of the year for me. It was a good record. Now, Talking about Edmonds makes me think of Nick Lowe, and uh, number 12, uh, Nick Lowe's uh, The Abominable Showman. Again, not one of Nick's greatest records, but man, there is just some really fine stuff on here. One of my favorite all-time Nick Lowe songs, Rage and Eyes, is on here. Uh, uh, he's working here with the band that he called Noise to Go. Uh, Paul Carrick was in that band. A great, great uh, duet between Nick and Paul on a song called Wish You Were Here. Uh, Saint Beneath the Paint, uh, one song that was pretty good uh, in, the, in the live show. But again, not not a solid, solid record, but uh, still uh, brought a lot of joy back in 83 to me as well. Okay, number 11. Uh, and again, here, here kind of I'm getting into like where I liked a few songs a lot. I think the album is probably more respected than my personal taste. But uh, number 11, uh, Speaking in Tongues. Talking Heads, uh, boy, by this time, they were big stuff uh, all over MTV. You had uh, the, the big song from this record was uh, Burning Down the House. I also liked uh, Girlfriend, uh, Girlfriend is Better, and uh, Slippery People. A uh, good, solid record, holds up really well. You know, this is kind of when they were expanding the band, you know, out, outside of the core, uh, you know, foursome, and, you know, had a lot of percussion and, and, and things like that and uh you know good good solid good solid record uh from the talking heads um number 10 now you know if you've been following this you know i really like pop stuff and one of the best pop bands back in this era of course was culture club uh this is uh color color by numbers their second record uh had karma chameleon on it uh, Church of the Poison Mind. Again, they were everywhere. They were omnipresent <laughs> on MTV. I actually saw them uh, in Austin at the uh, Irwin Center in a sort of a half arena setup, and I thought they were great. Uh, good, solid record. Great pop music. Holds, holds up pretty well. Uh, coming in at number 10. Uh, number 9, just talking about omnipresent. I didn't I use the word omnipresent for a while ago. Uh, the Police. God, the Police were huge, and I think I saw them... Uh, around here and, you know, playing, you know, to like 50,000 people in an open field in Austin. I mean, they were just huge. And this, as it turns out, Synchronicity was the final album uh, for, the, for, the, for the trio. Um, 
some really really fine songs on this on this record. Um, the title track, of course, Synchronicity. Uh, Every breath you take is on here. King of Pain, wrapped around your finger. Good, good, solid record. It, and this is kind. Of, this looks kind of funny to you. And I was looking for the song titles, and they were in Spanish. In fact, I had a Mexican pressing of the record that I picked up in uh, in uh, Mexico on a trip down there. But uh, again, number nine, Synchronicity by the Police. Not their my favorite Police album, but again, a pretty strong record. Um, number eight. I'm making sure I'm not correct on my count. Uh, another record that had a several strong cuts but just not consistently as an album but i tell you the strong cuts were so strong uh the crossing by big country and gosh what a what a great song in uh the title track uh sort of bands you know track title of, of in a big country what a great song that is uh feel the fire feels a fire fantastic song well too um didn't see big country had was supposed to go to the austin show and and and, and didn't make it um you know they had a didn't have much of a career after this, but uh, uh, Stuart Adamson, the lead singer of Big Country, did live here in Nashville for a while, and I got to see him um, with one of his side projects, a band called the Raphaels, play over at the Bluebird Cafe, and it was so great to to see Stuart, and uh, he actually did an acoustic version of In a Big Country that was just sublime. It was so, so, so beautiful. And uh, sadly, uh, he wasn't with us much longer, and uh, Stuart took his own life about a year or two after that, I was re really sad to hear that. And uh, again, uh, Big Country, In a Big Country, just a fantastic song. I mean, and it's also on, on a list of uh, one of those things where uh, I believe the band did it twice in their live show. I, I keep a lot of crazy lists of things, and I think that's one of the, the things about uh, about this is that it was such a strong song. I think the open and close are set with it, so that's, that's okay with me. Uh, number seven. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest U2 fan in the world. I think I've made that bef clear before. I like them. I just don't think they're the greatest band in the world, like everybody seems to think. But uh, War sure was a fine album. Uh, their, their their third record. Um, gosh, it's got it's just got their cla some classics on it. Sunday Bloody Sunday, New Year's Day, Two Hearts Speed is One. Uh, good good solid record. Uh, I did see them. You know, I, I did see them at the Capitol Theater in Passaic around this time, which was kind of an, an exciting show. Uh, you know, they were just about to really, really, um, you know, take take off, and it was kind of neat to see them in a small theater where it was just full, full of excitement. So, uh, War Clocks in at number seven. Uh, number six, and again, like you two, I'm not the world's biggest R.E.M. fan, although I do love R.E.M. Uh, their debut record uh, comes in at number six for me. I think this... Uh, maybe my favorite REM record, but you know they they came out with the radio free Europe single in '81, had the Chronic Town EP in '82, and '83. Uh, you know they put out their debut album Murmur, uh, had a Radio Free Europe on here, uh, Catapult, uh, produced by Mitch Easter. I, I I think Mitch is just one of my favorite producers. Uh, definitely a great REM record. <laughs> Jokingly, how could you talk about this? There's no lyric sheet in here. What the hell is this guy saying? Yeah, uh, you know, Michael Stipe sure did like, did like to mumble, but uh, but again, uh, just a great record, and uh, you know, the instrumentation alone of of his vocals were made it made it made it well worth it. And uh, Radio for Europe, such such a great 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 song to to this day. Now number five, here's one I almost missed because I did not see it on anybody's list, and just kind of when I was scouring the things that came out in '83, realized how much I love this record, number the number five pick. Uh, John Hyatt's Riding with the King. Now this was sort of in the in the middle of Hyatt's career. He had maybe four albums out before this that just really kind of didn't go anywhere. And, and this was sort of a big record for him because he met up with Nick Lowe, which kind of led to, uh, you, you know, just I think a little more attention for him. Eventually, you know, they, they got together in Little Village. As a matter of fact, uh, the two two sides of this record were done and produced differently. Side two was produced by Nick Lowe and also had his backing band of Noise to Go on it, which is quite neat. Um, although the the best song on this record is the one is on the A side, uh, and that's She Loves the Jerk. Uh, what what a great song! If you don't know that one, Elvis Costello covered it, Rodney Crowell covered it. Uh, just a super song you need to check out. But on side two, Riding with the King, the title track, which uh, Eric Clapton and BB King covered a, a few years. Uh, you know, many years later, at you know, kind of fit them perfectly, but just just a great record. And for you for your trivia buffs, 
you know, at the time I said, he, you know, he was mentioned, he met up with Nick Lowe and Nick Lowe's producer, excuse me, Nick Lowe's manager at the time was Jake Riviera, who also managed Elvis Costello. That's who owns this motorcycle. I think, uh, I think Jake may even be the one that told me that. I got to meet him one time and mentioned that to me. But so there you go. Uh, number five, uh, John Hyatt riding with the King. Now, speaking about Mr. Costello, again, not my favorite Elvis Costello album, but hard to exclude this one from the best of 83. Number four, Elvis Costello's Punch the Clock. Had his, I guess at the time, his biggest hit single uh, in Every Day I Write the Book, which is just fantastic. He later, of course, redid it uh, in a sort of a Mercy Beat version rather than sort of the, you know, the poppy version here. But gosh, it's got shipbuilding on it. How could, uh, how could you not uh, include an album that had such a classic like shipbuilding on it? And a lot, a lot of other great songs. Uh, saw quite a few uh, show. I saw three, three shows on, the, on this tour, Clocking Across America. And that's significant when we get to one of the uh, later records in today's uh, list. Number three. Now, this one is going to surprise you. It's going to shock you. I don't think this one was on anybody else's list. And you may say... That's it for Music City Mike. He's nuts. <laughs> but I told you I love the pop stuff. But number three, Tracy Ullman, You Broke My Heart in 17 Places. Gosh, I loved this record back then. I was in love with Tracy Ullman. I think I still am in love with Tracy Ullman. She is not only just a funny person and a fantastic actress, she is a great singer. And she had some really great taste in the songs she picked. And one of my favorite songs of all time. She did a cover version on it, and a lot of people think it's her song, but that's Kirstie McCall's They Don't Know. What a fantastic song, and what a great version she does of it. Um, she also did Doris Day's Move Over Darling, uh, and one of the other things that's really cool about this record, she does Blondie's I'm Always Touched by Your Presence Dear, which was written by an old high school friend of mine, Gary Valentine, so I was happy to see Gary get uh, you know, get the attention from this song being on this record. But I, I love this record. Uh, Tracy never toured. Uh, I think she did some late night TV Johnny Carson show, and she was fabulous. I mean, she sounded so great. It was well choreographed. Still today, I, I, I've listened to this a lot recently, and it, it, it's still a solid record. I think she had maybe one or two records after that. And uh, Tracy's been kind of quiet lately on my circle. I'm not sure what she's up to, but my number three record that year, and probably a surprise to a lot of you, Tracy Allman's you Broke My Heart in 17 Places. It was on, I believe she was on Stiff in the UK. This is an MCA version on the US. I think she was on Stiff. Number two, and I'm kind of surprised I didn't have this on vinyl and I went and bought it and I'm so glad I did. I had I had the CD version, uh, but what a fantastic record. David Bowie's Let's Dance. I love it. I saw that I saw him around this time and he was just fantastic live. Uh, you know, on this record, you of course got uh, he, his work with Nile Rodgers producing it. Maybe it's a little poppy and a little slick and a little commercial for Bowie, but so what? I just think the songs are great. Let's Dance, um, Modern Love, uh, China Girl, the song that he co-wrote with Iggy Pop. And also, remember, you may have forgotten, the guitar player on this record was none other than Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yep. Uh, all over MTV, just just a solid, solid record. And I know if you may know, I've kind of been reading a little bit about it. Vaughn was supposed to be in the touring band, and uh, it just came out that his debut record was going to come out, and he didn't do the tour with, with Bowie. But again, number two record uh, for 1983 for me was David Bowie's Let's Dance. Number one. Now, some of my friends out there, I know <laughs> know what record I'm going to pick. Uh, and, and one of my top... My favorite records of all time, clearly in my top top 15, uh, Aztec Cameras, Highland, Hard Rain. And the connection before with Elvis Costello is Elvis Costello really did a great job of introducing us to the music of Aztec Camera and its leader, singer, songwriter, guitar player, Roddy Frame. Uh, when they opened up the U.S. leg of the Clock and Across America tour, so I got to see Aztec Camera three times. This is just one of the best debut albums of all time. Roddy wrote most of these songs when he was just about 15 years old. Um, you know, today it still just sounds so fresh, so beautiful. And uh, he is undoubtedly the best acoustic guitar player I have ever seen live. I was so fortunate to see him about five years ago in London and it just, just blew me away. And he's just... He's just not around enough uh, as much as I'd like to see him anymore doing. But he's done a lot of this, quite a few Aztec Camera records, solo records by Roddy Frame. But 
do yourself a favor if you don't know Aztec Hammer, Roddy Frame. Start here with this great record. Side one, track one, uh, Oblivious was uh, the song, and it was a hit in the UK. Uh, you got so many other great songs on here. Pillar to Post, um, Walk Out to Winner, The Boy Wonders. I mean, it, it, you know, it's just, just, just a solid, solid record. Great singing, great songwriting, and I said great acoustic guitar playing. So that's my top 13 for 1983. Who knows where we're going to go next? Actually, uh, if you go down, now if you like what you're hearing here, you know, look at the playlist we have at the Music City Mike channel. Down in the playlist, you'll see ranking records. You'll see we have a lot of artists that we've done before. Uh, you know, of these ones we looked at today, I've done a ranking of Aztec Hammer. There's one of Elvis Costello. There's one of Nick Lowe. And I'm sure some of these other artists you'll see in there uh, eventually. And also, if you look down the playlist, you'll see that uh, I've got some other playlists on great forgotten records that I've written about, uh, shopping for records, visiting local and record stores around the area, other things like that. So spend some time on the channel. If you like what you see, please share this. Please press the like button down there at the bottom. And also, please, please subscribe. We're trying to hit the magic number of 1,000 subscribers, and we're almost halfway there. So... Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for your comments. I love dialogue with you. And these analysis of the different years come up with them. great, great comments where people tell me albums they think belonged in the list or uh, you know, let me know what I may have missed. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to read. So again, thank you so much for uh, spending the time to watch us. And we'll see you next time. This is Mike from Music City.